Welcome to Bida. I'm no rabbi. We just celebrate our 10 year anniversary and I'm so excited to bring to you our new menu launch. Today, after extensive uh, R&D, we're gonna show you the new items that are coming in and some of the items that we're discontinuing. We'll start by introducing you to all our proprietary items that we're bringing into US Foods. First thing is gonna be our new to-go containers. This is a container that's multi-use. You'll be able to put it for mezzas, pitas, platters, wraps, Greek salad, uh, Greek fries. It's a multi-use container. You order it separately. It comes with the bottom as a container and then as a top as its own box. So you have multi-use for this. This will be our new, new to-go item for all to-go items. It's perforated up top and sold separately. Next, we're gonna go with the side items. This is everything that will house side items such as falafel, maybe uh, rice, um, Greek fries, whatever you wanna put. Again, this is also sold separately. You could purchase the bottoms and you could purchase the top separately. Moving on to our eight ounce container. This is our traditional eight ounce container that we put all the sauces in. It will be branded up top with the pita logo and it will also be branded at the bottom. Use it for all our sauces. I'll carry over to our new little sou uh, souffle cups. This is a very neat souffle cup because this comes and it, it gives you two different sizes. It could be made into a two ounce cup or it can be made into a one and a half ounce cup based on how you put it. Now, this way I will show you a little bit later how to put the top on and utilize it as a two ounce and a one and a half ounce. Very cost effective for our franchisees and I hope you guys like it. Next, we're gonna go with the new souvenir cups. It's a 16 ounce cup. It will be pita branded. It comes with the red top, the red exterior, and also our 32 ounce pita branded cup, which, was, which is a souvenir cup that we use for all our drinks. I'll follow up with our new cutlery kits. Our new cutlery kits are gonna have a coupon on the inside, a fork and a knife, and then also our pita branded outside. All of these items will be available to you to order via US Foods within the next four to eight weeks, okay? So, so to kick off, some of the items that we're actually gonna remove from our menu to simplify our order guide, to simplify our ordering process, and simplify our menu. I'll give you a little list and I'll go over it a little bit later. So first thing is we're gonna get rid of harissa hummus, roasted red pepper hummus, baba, cauliflower, yellow onion, shata sauce, mezza trio, completely removing the grilled veggies off our menu, salmon, grandma's cookies, Nutella, wheat pita, mac and cheese, shrimp on the skewer, horizon milk, tahini, and uh, we're going to substitute the Greek dressing with a Ken's Greek dressing. So those are items we're gonna talk about a little bit later when we make our, or when we make our products and what's replacing them. Right. And what's Some of the new items that are coming in, uh, a new flounder replaced the salmon, the white sauce, which is our new house sauce, a pomegranate sauce that we're gonna bring in as well. Lavash wrap will replace the wheat pita. Spanish copita, I know everybody's excited about that. Three different versions of the rolls, a cheese roll, a steak roll, and a chicken roll. Super excited to tell you how those are gonna turn out. Veggie grape leaves, new Greek fry methods, new harissa to replace the shata, uh, new tzatziki sauce, a garbanzo salad, garbanzo beans as toppers, roasted red pepper as topper for the hummus, traditional hummus, and then some new kids items such as uh, Gibbs goldfish that replace the, the grandma's cookies. So I'll touch base a little bit on some of the marketing and branding ideas that we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little bit of window clings for everybody. Our sneeze guard glass will have our new sauces on there as well. Uh, digital menus, will have uh, three TV menus and one rotating banner. A new menu layout for our to-go menus as well. Um, that's it. Let's jump into the prep. I'm gonna go step by step and show you guys all the new operational methods and all the new items that, we have to that we're introducing into PETA. We'll start off with the garlic sauce. The garlic sauce is gonna be very similar to the one. We're not changing that out. Tzatziki sauce will also be the new tzatziki sauce that we're introducing. It's got a little bit more flavor, a little bit more loose. Our chopped parsley will stay the same. Of course, we have our harvest blend, which is, again, the same item we have. Our pickles are gonna be introduced only on our falafels from now on. So you will have uh, less usage on the, uh, on the shredded pickles. So just know that that's gonna be introduced only on the falafel. No longer will it be come on, on the shawarma and the tawuk. The pickled turnips, again, only a falafel use. Our diced tomatoes will stay the same. Our shredded, uh, our shredded lettuce, again, stays the same. We're gonna walk into the, the rice. Our rice, since we're discontinuing the carrots, we no longer will do carrots inside our rice. So it'll be your rice base, again, with your seasonings and your butter. Our new veggie grape leaves, as you can see in here. Some of our new menu items that we're introducing, our steak roll, our chicken roll, and our cheese roll. One of the exciting items that we're gonna bring in is also the garbanzo beans, which will be a topper for all, this, 
the sauces, the salads, and some of the appetizers. Our new roasted red peppers that will come from U.S. Foods that we're bringing in for you guys, which will be a topper. I will show you guys how to make the sauces, uh, the, the mezza spreads with that. Jumping in into the, the purple onion, which is our new base onion for everything. We no longer will use our yellow onions. Everything is going to be a red onion moving forward, okay? Lemon wedges stay the same. Feta crumbles as usual. Cucumbers. Sliced pepperoncini. For the new salads, we're going to introduce our grape tomatoes cut in half so that they're more visible, and as well as our kamada olives cut in half so they're more visible as well. Our new traditional sauce will be the only sauce base that we have for the mezza. We will add this sauce and we'll have the toppers on top of that for you guys. So traditional sauce will be the only sauce as a base and then we have our toppers that we'll put on as top. Jumping in, our traditional olive oil stays the same. Super excited to introduce you guys all our new sauces, our new harissa sauce, our new pomegranate sauce, our new white house sauce, and our new tzatziki sauce, which will all be served in squeeze bottles moving forward for ease of operations. And then we'll jump into the new pita. So our traditional seven inch pita stays the same. Our new mini pita and kids pita five inch Olympia bread. And then one of my favorites, the lavash wrap, which we'll show you how to wrap the, the product later, but come like so. All right, jumping into our mezza spreads. I am going to show you how to do the traditional hummus with the roasted red pepper topper as well as the harissa topper, okay? So we're going to take our 8-ounce container. We are going to serve about a 6-ounce portion of traditional hummus inside. You are going to run the spoon around the rim so you get the base like so. Very important for you guys to notice that our parsley pinched goes in one side and then our paprika goes on top of the parsley like so. We do not spread it out like this. It is always going to be served like this. You take your olive oil, want to have an ounce in there, and, to, and we will now begin to add a handful of garbanzo beans into our hummus spreads like so. Directly into the middle so they get soaked in with the olive oil. Top it with a little bit more olive oil. Serve it with an eight ounce, with eight cut, two eight cut pitas. And that is your traditional hummus. Leading into the roasted red pepper hummus. Again, six ounces of traditional hummus as the base. Same way, you scoop out the middle like so. Parsley in one side, paprika directly above the parsley. With the roasted red pepper, you want to take a spoonful of roasted red peppers, place them directly in the middle like so, another spoonful, so that you have a little mountain coming out of the top. Take a little bit of olive oil, drizzle it on top, and then your handful of garbanzo beans to garnish the top. That is now your roasted red pepper hummus. And then I will carry on to the harissa hummus, six ounces of our base of traditional hummus. You're going to portion it out like so. Make the well in the middle, parsley on one side only, paprika directly above the parsley as a garnish. You will take our new harissa sauce, squeeze it in the middle. Sorry. <laughs> All right. We'll get a new bottle. It's a brand new bottle. The tip's still all the way up. We need to cut the tip a little bit. Take a garnish of our garbanzo beans, place them in the middle, and then serve. So that it will be our traditional hummus with roasted red pepper, traditional hummus, and harissa hummus. Our new souf uh, souffle cups which will portion out an ounce and a half of the hummus. Again, make it well in the middle. Parsley on one side only. Garnish with a little bit of paprika. Olive oil. 
two pieces or three pieces of garbanzo beans. You take your top. This is how you make it a two ounce container. Click the corners. And that is your side. I will make one for you guys to show you how to do the roasted red pepper in here. Make it well in the middle again. Parsley garnish in one corner. Paprika directly above it. A small spoonful of the roasted red pepper. Place that directly in the middle. A couple pieces of garbanzo for garnish and a little bit of olive oil. And that is your side of hummus with any pita or um, side that they like. Voila. We're going to jump into our sauces. Everybody knows our garlic sauce. Going to stay the same. I'll introduce you guys to our new house sauce. So the base of this is going to be sour cream, sumac, uh, some other spices, a little bit of uh, uh, citric acid, which is lemon juice, and that's it for the house sauce. This is our harissa sauce, which is replacing the shata sauce. It's our new spicy sauce. This is our new tzatziki sauce. And our new pomegranate sauce, which is, again, sour cream base, spices, pomegranate, concentrate. And I'm going to introduce you how to make the spicy tzatziki. You'll take the tzatziki sauce, squirt a little bit in the cup, take our new spicy harissa, put it in the middle, take the spoon, mix it up. And serve it like so. So, all right, to recap our traditional garlic sauce, our new white sauce, house sauce, our harissa sauce, which is our new spicy sauce, our new tzatziki sauce, our new pomegranate sauce. Last but not least, our new spicy tzatziki sauce, which is going to be the tzatziki mixed with a little bit of harissa. Comes out like this. All right, we're going to jump into creating some of the menu items. We're going to take one of our sides to go container. We'll start off with the falafel. We'll take a little bit of lettuce as the base. Five pieces of falafel, place it inside of your container. You're going to start off with the white sauce because now falafel gets drizzled with the white sauce. You are going to top it with pickles. as well as turnips. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley, diced tomatoes, and then finish it off with a little drizzle of the white sauce on top. All right, that is how we make our falafel. We're gonna move on to our veggie grape leaves. You'll take one of your containers small bed of lettuce at the bottom. You're going to serve six pieces of grape leaves inside each port serving. Two lemon wedges inside. Garnish it with garbanzo beans, parsley, and diced tomatoes. That is how we are going to make our veggie grape leaves. Moving on to our spanakopita, exciting new menu item. We can put it inside of this, if you'd like, bed of lettuce at the base. You're going to take your spanakopita off the flat top, cut it into diagonal, place it inside of your to-go container like so. Garnish it with feta crumbles. Parsley. And then this will get served with our new pomegranate sauce. You can place that inside of here as well. That is going to be our spanakopita. Give me time to clean. Next, we'll jump right into our cheese rolls. 
you want to use the same to go container if you'd like, if it's to go. Bed of lettuce. You're going to take three cheese rolls, place them inside. You're going to serve it with our new house sauce, which is our white sauce. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley and then place the sauce inside. Now, we'll do a little bit differently with the steak and chicken rolls. You want to take two rolls and cut them directly down the center. You will see that this is the steak rolls, bed of lettuce. You want to place the rolls like so inside the container like this, leaving us room for the sauce, which the steak will get the new pomegranate sauce. And you will place that sauce directly inside. And that is how you're going to serve the steak rolls. We'll move on to the chicken rolls. Again, same setup. To go, if it's for to go, directly down the middle. Bed of lettuce. I'll show you guys what the chicken looks like. You're going to cut them, place them inside like so. The chicken will get the new house sauce, which is the white sauce. And you place it inside and you serve it like so. So just to come to, to give you guys a little bit of feedback, this is our chicken. It will come with the white sauce, which is our house sauce. The steak rolls, which will come in with our pomegranate sauce. The cheese rolls, which will come with our white sauce. Our falafel will come with our white sauce, a little bit of garbanzo garnish. Our new veggie grape leaves with a little bit of garbanzo garnish. And our spanish copada, which will come with our pomegranate sauce. All right, guys, we're going to jump into our Greek fries. Um, something that's uh, been brought to my attention, which is superior to the three-in-one. We are now, we're going to only use the foreign one for simplicity and obviously taste. So from now on, we will only serve you guys the foreign one that will be your seasoning for your French fries. So, started jumping into the Greek fries, new setup. Again, if it's to go, we'll do it in one of these bowls. You'll take your French fries, do the shake on top, toss. Now, everybody, you use portion control. So make sure you portion control your order of french fries as the base. Our new way, we're going to take the crumbled feta, sprinkle it right on top like so. White sauce, it's drizzled on. Pomegranate sauce, the other way. You will garnish it with a little bit of parsley and a little bit of feta on top and a little sprinkle of the amazing foreign one. This will be how we will serve the Greek fries from now on. All right, all right guys, we're gonna roll into uh, Greek fries with a protein topper. So again, we're gonna show you how to make it. You're gonna take your shoestring French fries, your foreign one, a little shake. Please make sure you use portion control methods for this preparation of the video, we're just going to take one setup like so. Fry base, your crumbled feta directly on top. You want the cheese to bind to the french fries when they're warm. Now, with the new Greek fries, we no longer use tahini as stated earlier in the video. So we are introducing our new sauces to the Greek fries. Obviously, you know it's our pomegranate and our white house sauce. You're going to take the, uh, I'm so sorry, you're going to come in with your protein. Now, when you put the protein on, you want to make sure you cover the whole plate. You're going to come in with your white sauce, the drizzle. Follow up with your pomegranate side on the other way. Garnish a little bit of parsley. Top it off with a little bit of feta. And then one little shake up top. Serve it with your color cake if it's to go. It's going to be served like so. We'll put a topper on it so you guys can see. That is your Greek fries 
with a protein added on. We will have build sheets for everybody made up for as you guys can, can understand, know how to make the pitas from now on. Subtle changes for you guys, but I just want you to see it. We're going to start with the falafel wrap, I mean falafel pita. So the, the first change is going to be every falafel wrap or pita will have a hummus base, okay? So we're going to bind the product with the hummus base at the bottom. All our sandwiches will have the lettuce, tomato, onion moving forward. Our purple onion. And we're doing this for simplicity of operation for our team members. We're going to take our three pieces of falafel and then you're going to crush one in the middle, one in the top, one right here. Remember, falafel now gets the white sauce, so make sure you're using that. No longer will we use tahini. You'll drizzle that on top of the falafel so that they stay nice and juicy. You will come up with the pickles on top of that. The turnips. Come back in and fold it. You will garnish it with a little bit of parsley and diced tomatoes. That is going to be your new falafel pita. Now I'm going to transition right into the steak shawarma pita. So you're going to drop your pita, your garlic base at the bottom. Again, every sandwich has the same lettuce, tomato, onion moving forward as the base toppings. Everything will be on the build sheets for you guys. You're going to take your portion of steak shawarma. Steak shawarma is served with our pomegranate sauce, which is our orange sauce. You come in, you drizzle it on top. Fold. Garnish with a little bit of parsley and tomato. And that is the steak shawarma. All right, I'm going to introduce you guys how to do the flatbread from now on. I mean, the wraps for our pitas. So if the customer orders the wrap, you're going to take the 12 by 12 wrap, place it on the panini press for about 10 seconds. You'll see a little bu bubble formation coming here. You're going to put the pointy end towards your stomach. We are going to do a tawuk um, or a grilled chicken wrap. As you know, with the new setup, we're going to do the grit. We're going to do the garlic base and you're going to spread it from side to side. And then you're going to put a little bit up here as the binder for when you roll it, okay? So we'll do this. Uh, we're going to grab some lettuce and then purple onion as well as tomatoes, which is our typical base of all our sandwiches. All right. Then we'll grab the tawuk chunks, which is five pieces of grilled chicken. You'll place them like so from end to end. Make sure you get good coverage. The trick to rolling is you want to take this end Bring it up top, tuck it in with here. Make sure you take one more roll, bring in the ends like so, and then roll it. Remember, your binder is right here, so when you roll it, come to here, it's going to help stick it. You're going to take this, and you're going to place it on the char grill for about 10 seconds based on the heat temperature of your, your grill, and then you're going to flip it to make sure you get the other two grill marks. I am going to roll into making you guys the signature with this. We are going to use our tzatziki sauce. Place it from end to end. Take a little binder for the corner. Again, this is a signature, so we'll get the french fries at the base. The extra portion of protein inside the sandwich. You are going to drizzle the tzatziki sauce on top. Come back in, roll it like so, one, fold, fold, and then this is your binder. So you're going to come in, it's going to look like this. So when you take it off the grill, am I able to take that one or not yet? You're going to take your sandwich off the grill, you're going to have the grill marks on it. You're going to place it down, get the knife, and cut it directly down the middle and serve it like so. So this is your wrap version of a tawuk. And then I'm going to finish off the, the 
the signature for you guys. Yeah, that's great. You can always use your tongs because it's a little hot. Make sure you get the grill marks on both sides. You want it to bind. Grab your knife. Cut it down the middle. Open it up. And this is what you see. So you have the traditional uh, pita. Traditional pita with steak. You have your wrap with t uh, grilled chicken and your signature wrap right here. So that is how you are going to roll your wraps and make your pitas from now on. Make sure on the wraps you're heating up for 10 to 15 seconds. Place it in the corner, roll it, tuck both sides. Make sure you put a binder and grill it for 10 seconds on each side. Now we're going to push along and I'm going to uh, show you how to make the platters from, from now on. This is going to be our to-go container. Same scenario if you put it on a uh, dining plate, but we'll use a to-go container. From now on, all platters are going to have the base of rice, not a bed of lettuce. So our base is going to be the rice. So we'll put the rice base like so, and the protein will go on top of the rice. So we'll start off with the shrimp platter. The shrimp platter is going to have the rice base, four pieces of your four cup pitas. The shrimp will no longer come on the skewer. We're going to get the loose shrimp. You'll give six um, shrimps per portion. And of course, a platter gets two portions. So that's 12 total shrimp pieces. You will place them like so. All right. Then you are going to come in with the white sauce. Shrimp gets the white sauce. You'll drizzle it over the top. Like so you are going to garnish with a little bit of parsley and tomato. And then for this specific one there, we are going to uh, offer the side as the garbanzo salad. I'm going to show you guys how to do the garbanzo salad. You'll take some garbanzo, which will be on your line. You'll place it inside of an eight ounce container, a little bit of diced tomatoes and some purple onions. Now our dressing for this will be our house white sauce. So you'll drizzle a little bit on top and then you can mix it up with a spoon or you can serve it like so. So you place it inside the platter, your two lemon wedges for your shrimp, a little bit of garnish on this, and this is going to be your shrimp platter. I'll carry on to the I believe we are making the chicken shawarma platter, same setup. The base is always going to be rice. So from now on, the rice is going to be the base. They get one option as the side. So you place it inside the container. Your four cup of pita bread, your two portions of chicken. Now remember, the chicken shawarma will get the white sauce. You'll drizzle the white sauce on top like this. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley and tomato. And then this one we're going to offer with the papas fritas, which is the french fries. One portion of that. And that is how you're going to make the chicken shawarma platter. So. We have the shrimp, again, six pieces per, uh, per serving from now on because they're coming to loose. You'll get 12 total pieces inside of the, the platter. Uh, side, four cut of pita, garbanzo salad. Garbanzos, tomatoes, red onion, white sauce, garnish. Chicken shawarma is going to be your base of rice, four cup pita, chicken, white sauce, and then you're serving your side option as the side. And I'm doing this for you guys so you can see how awesome the food looks inside of the boxes and how easy they are to use. All right, we're going to jump into the rice bowls. Again, we're going to use our new to-go containers for this video. You are going to do one portion of rice and make sure you spread it all up in the, in the middle. Lettuce, again, spread the lettuce. Red onion and diced tomatoes. All our bowls will have the same 
meat-based. This is going to be a chicken euro bowl, so you'll take your portion of chicken. You are going to spread it. Our chicken will get the house sauce, which is the white sauce. You'll drizzle it like so. Come and garnish it with a little bit of parsley and diced tomatoes. This is how you make our chicken euro bowl. Place that here. I'll go directly to the next one, which is, I believe, is a steak shawarma bowl. You're going to do the rice base. Make sure you spread it all across the inside. You're going to take your lettuce base, topper, red onion. Make sure you cover the whole bottom of the plate, okay? Some diced tomatoes. And I know I mentioned this to you guys in the pitas and the wraps that shawarmas will no longer have tahini and they will no longer have pickles. So make sure that we know it's rice based for the bowls with lettuce, tomato, and onion. And then we'll do your portion of protein. Want to make sure you cut, get coverage across the whole bowl. And then the steak shawarma will get our pomegranate sauce. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley and tomato and that is our steak bowl shawarma bowl and our chicken euro bowl jumping into our uh, uh, salads we're going to, again the multi-use of this bowl is going to be great for us for to go and uh, dining of course you can use your uh, dining plates but this is going to be for to go so you are going to we're going to make a greek salad and then a, a, a greek salad with a um, the flounder which is our new fish so First thing you're going to do, you're going to take your portion of your uh, harvest blend and use that as the base of your salad, right? And then just like any Greek salad, all salads are not going to come with the same base, which is harvest blend, uh, to tomatoes, cucumbers, pepperoncini, feta, and olives, as our, uh, and red onion as our base. So we'll come in, we'll put the red onion on top. Again, you want to make sure you spread all your toppings for all salads, bowls, platters, you name it. distribute it properly across um, so with the olives and the tomatoes what we did to get a little bit better coverage we cut all our olives and our tomatoes now in half all grape tomatoes will be cut in half all our olives will be cut in half as part of our prep okay so you're going to take four tomatoes which is going to be eight halves and place them all over the salad and that will give us much better coverage on the salad and then you're going to take uh, four olives and cut them in half so that's eight halves all right pepperoncinis a small handful you again you're gonna put about four to five um, slices in there you're coming in with the feta as the last piece of the puzzle to make sure that that's the part that stands out the crumbled feta garnish it with a little bit of parsley and then, we no longer have our house Greek dressing. We have the Ken's Greek dressing, which we are going to serve with all the Greek salads. So you could place that like so if you'd like. Garnish it with a little bit of parsley, um, and then serve it. So that is going to be our Greek salad. I'm going to push through and make our Greek salad with the flounder on top. You're going to start with your base of Harvest Blend. Again, all salads are built the same way from now on for simplicity purposes and ease of operation for you guys. It's going to be harvest blend, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, pepperoncini, red onion, and feta cheese. So all the bases will be the same. Again, four whole grapes cut in halves. So you'll get eight halves. And then again, four uh, uh, Kamada olives cut in half, so you get eight pieces. So you get better coverage. So two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight. And again, this helps you out with uh, food cost and inventory control. Seven, eight, nine. About four to five pieces of pepperoncini inside. Red onion. Remember, to get coverage across the whole salad, we want to make sure that it looks full. And the last piece of the puzzle, again, we come in with a little bit of feta cheese all over it. All right, so here we're going to get the fish, which is our flounder. 
we will make sure that we place the pieces of fish inside like so. And then our fish will get our house sauce, which is our white sauce. And then you're going to drizzle it on all the fish. And if the customer would like to add sauce, you give them a base of the white sauce on here. You garnish with a little bit of parsley, and there you go. So your Greek salad, and then a salad, Greek salad with flounder and side of dressing. And then don't forget, our Greek cups, if they want the Greek dressing, it'll be the Ken's Greek dressing from now on. All right. So we're jumping into the kids' uh, items. A couple new items. So as you know, we're introducing the five-inch pita from now on. Our cheese pita will now come on these. You'll take two five-inch pitas, you will place two slices of cheese on top, close it up, take a little bit of the foil, and then wrap it like you traditionally do, and place it on the panini press. While that's heating up, I'm going to show you how to do the, the new uh, kids' pitas. So, so with our new kids' menu items, we're going to make all our kids' meals uh, our kids' pitas, yours or chicken, they're going to come in a five-inch pita. You'll place that on the ground. I mean, I'm sorry, on the table. <laughs> a little bit of tzatziki sauce, lettuce, and then the half portion of your meat. You're going to wrap it up like so. Drizzle a little bit of tzatziki sauce on top little bit of garnish and this is going to be your new kids euro all right so with that being finalized I'm going to grab the cheese pita so with that you're going to cut it in half almost looks like two half moons we will grab our containers put your cheese pita inside this one will come with a portion of half a portion of french fries our new kids uh, cookies. We will do the kids euro along the half side of rice. And then our kids cookie. And then they served with our new milk that we will offer at the store or a fountain drink like we have like so. That is going to be your kids' meals. The new kids' cheese pita with the french fries, our new goldfish uh, cookies, cinnamon cookies with your choice of drink, our new kids' euro on a five inch pita with a side of rice, cookies, and a milk. All right, guys, we're going to introduce you one of our favorite new items, which is the pick one or pick three in the mini pita. So you get three options to choose from, a euro, a chicken euro, or a falafel, right? And they all come in on the five inch. The protein size is going to be just like the kids, which is a half a portion. I'm going to start with, uh, I will start for you guys with the, the chicken euro, the regular euro, and then the falafel. So again, a little bit of tzatziki at the base, small amount of lettuce. Remember, this is a small sandwich. You don't need to go heavy. A little bit of red onion and then some diced tomatoes, half a portion of the euro meat so that it closes, take the tzatziki sauce, drizzle it on top, and that is going to be your pick one, hypothetically, right? So pick one, if a customer gets this, we can garnish this with a little bit of that and diced tomatoes. We take our sides and we place it in here like so, and that is a pick one. So pick two, we're going to do, I mean pick three, the second item we're going to do chicken. So again, light tzatziki, light lettuce, light onion, light tomato, and then a half a portion of the chicken. And then our tzatziki sauce drizzle on top. You are going to... Garnish it with uh, parsley and tomato and leave that here. Finally, we are going to do the 
falafel. So again, the falafel will always get the small amount of hummus at the bottom. Again, light lettuce, light onion, light tomato, two pieces of falafel. Falafel gets the white sauce, our house sauce, drizzle it like so, pickles, turnips. Now for this specific one, just want to tell you guys that anybody can make a sandwich spicy. We'll always add our spicy harissa. So for this one, we'll just do it for you guys. So we'll put our harissa sauce on top and then we'll fold it. And then we will garnish this with a little bit of parsley and tomato. So I want to show you guys how we will package the pick three. Just remember, pick one goes in here. Pick three will go in one of these. And you will place it like this. And that is a pick three. And then pick one will go in here. So they can choose one of the items to put in one. If they want the three, they get these three. And that's it. All right, guys, we're going to finish off our new menu uh, item launch with the kinefe rolls. So very similar to the cheese rolls that we're serving for the appetizers and the kids' meals, you're going to put two in the fryer. When they come out for about a minute, minute and a half, they come out, you're going to be uh, sourced uh, a, a syrup, almost looks like a simple syrup, but it's a traditional uh, sugar syrup. And what you're going to do, you're going to have enough in a, in a half pan or a third pan you're going to drop directly from the fryer into the syrup. Make sure they are, they soak in there for about 30 seconds. While they're soaking, you want to make sure you serve them with a, uh, about a one ounce to one and a half ounce portion of the uh, syrup. Make sure you put the top down like so. And then this should be ready. So we're going to serve it. If it's to go, we'll serve it in one of these. If it's dining, we'll put it on a plate and then you'll put the syrup in there. So first thing you want to do is drop the syrup inside. And then you'll pick up your knefe rolls, which have been soaking for about 30 seconds inside the syrup. And then you're going to grab them and place them inside the to-go container, like so. And serve them. That is as simple as it gets. It's called a knefe roll. Cheese roll dipped in uh, sugar syrup with a side of sugar syrup on there, and then you pack it, and you go. There you go. All right, guys. Just in closing, some comments for you guys. I have my little notes so I can tell you. I will make sure, number one, that we all have the build sheets of how to make every single product for you guys ready to go within about a week, and week and a half, and send to you guys, okay? It will come in a digital format, and it will come to you in a laminated format for your stores. So to, to recap, we showed you guys how to do all the sauces, the wraps, the Greek fries, the bowls, the salads, the platters, and the new dessert items and the kids' meals and the mini pitas. Um, bill sheets we talked about. We have a hard menu launch of February 6th. So by February 6th in the morning, you guys will have all your uh, digital, uh, digital uh, files by Sunday night on the 5th, and you can introduce them on the 6th. We will make sure that the order guide for U.S. Foods and for the commerce area is updated so you know where to order the product. There will be some items that will auto ship, okay? So just be aware of that. I want to make sure everything's 100% for you guys. Um, I will introduce that in the video that I pull out. A new food cost sheet will come into play as well. The moment we finalize the order guides, I'll make sure that you guys have all the new food cost items so that you are, are all on the same page. And then um, all the, the new order guides with U.S. Foods will discontinue all the product come February 5th. So, I mean, I'm so sorry. February 4th, so that over the weekend you don't have to order any of the old product. I will say there will be some stuff that will be lagging so that you can use that lagging product for customers that are still coming in. For instance, if you still have a little bit of baba ganoush you want to sell, some harissa hummus you want to push out, just try to push it out that way and then obviously you won't be able to order it anymore from the, from the U.S. Foods order guide. And I just want to finalize something for you guys. Change is not easy. I know it's going to be hard for everybody to to kind of accept the changes that we're making, get rid of the sauces that we're doing, but we're doing this for the better of the company. We want to go a different direction. We want to have a little bit more, uh, introduce a little bit more, I guess, uh, easier palette for some of the 
the, our consumer base so that they can come in and try our product. You know, we're trying different things in different segments. So please be open-minded to the change. I know it's going to be tough. I know it's not going to be easy at the beginning, especially with your customers where, you know, they're used to a certain sandwich or a certain type of sauce that comes with a certain thing. But trust me, this has been a long time in the making. We've worked on it for a really long time. And this is the direction we want to go. I'm very certain that everybody will be happy. And um, we are going to put our money where our mouth is. We should spend about $50,000 on the launch of this in terms of digital advertising, marketing, food, and everything that we can get you guys. So it's going to be a big budget for us for you to introduce a new menu and the new items for our, for our customers. So I hope that you are going to be excited and happy about the products and as much as we are. So good luck, everybody, and much success in 2023. All right, guys, side note. I know it's probably you're going to all ask about it. We will have training, a, a trainer coming to you to show you how to do every single item um, in your store. Spencer Hall is going to be doing that for you guys. It's not going to be a one-month thing, so it's going to be a long duration of time. It's going to take two to three months for us to get to all the stores, maybe once or twice, to make sure everybody knows what they're doing. Um, so make sure you get a hold of Spencer. Make sure you get a hold of Danny. Make sure you hold Janelle, Mike, Chris, myself. If there's any questions or issues that you guys have, we're here. The build sheets will really tell you exactly what you need to know, 100%. The build sheets are what you need. This is, this is a step-by-step -step for you guys to have the success. Just know we're going to support you guys in the training aspect of it. And then we'll, uh, you know, we'll take it a day by day. So good luck, everybody, and, ha and happy 2023.